What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're going to be talking about round 10 Port Adelaide versus Collingwood at the MCG this Sunday at 2.30pm. It's going to be a very interesting game, we haven't played at the G since playing Carlton a few weeks ago uh, and this will be the second game we've played at the G in about two years so uh, it's going to be an interesting afternoon, especially we're going to be bouncing back from a, uh, a disappointing loss to the Bulldogs. Collingwood, well, they started really well against the Swans, but didn't do anything after that first quarter. So they'll be looking to make amends, which has uh, been a pretty um, subdued week for them. So they'll be looking to come out and uh, proving a point, while we've got our own statements to make as well. So a lot is going to be on the line for Sunday afternoon, so make sure you tune in for that one. But... Let's preview it first and see exactly how I think it'll pan out. As you can see, you got the play on BF7 Beanie for the um, big freeze uh, for the seventh time um, in a successive years now. This is a, a massive cause and something that's very special to Neil Danaher and obviously his fight with MND. So we'll be supporting this one again as I do every single year to support uh, what is a sensational cause. And I keep saying it every single time. He should be a uh, nominee for Australian of the Year and quite frankly should wing it, wing it, uh, uh, win it as well. So uh, make sure if you can get on board and really support the cause because he is one of our own, an Australian. Uh, he's, he's a fantastic person and um, we should uh, all be su supporting um, not only someone that is going through a rough trot but also in the AFL community. We're one big community, one big family. So let's get around him for the BF7 this year. We've got a game to play, that's still a few weeks ago. We've got Port Adelaide versus Collingwood this week. It's a massive game, I think, in terms for us. You know, there's a lot on the line. Um, there's uh, quite a few similarities coming about since the 2019 season where we couldn't beat uh, the top teams and we were struggling uh, to really make a statement and we were beating the, the lower-ranked sides. And now we've got an opportunity, well, not... Not against a top eight side or anything, but to you know, make a statement at the G um, against a Collingwood outfit that's been giving us hell the last few weeks. But in my own words, I'm going to say this. This has got nothing to do with the prison bars this week. This is about a professional performance that we should come out, prove to ourselves. We don't have to prove anything because you can't really prove something against Collingwood who's sitting 16th on the ladder. You know, the lowly rank haven't had a great year. You can't really say you're contenders when you're beating teams that you should be beating. But for us to make a statement, statement this week, come out and give ourselves some confidence in our abilities, get our game going properly, don't let them dictate. Uh, even in the showdown, we let the Crows dictate how we play. You know, we dominated the Crows, but we were playing to their level. And the Dogs last week, we had a fantastic second quarter, some of the best football I've seen. I'd love to see that type of footy this week for four quarters because if we're able to produce that, week in, week out, then no one's beating us. But if we can produce that this week against the Pies, a full four-quarter performance, which is something that we haven't quite done yet, um, I think then to ourselves, to our supporters, we'll be able to say, yeah, we've beaten Collingwood by 70 points at the G, away from home on a Sunday afternoon. You know, that's, that's to me, that's confidence. That's able to come out of that one and say, yeah, yeah, we're a good side. And teams around us, supporters around us, and anyone that's outside of Port Adelaide, it doesn't matter what they think. But outside, you start to get a bit, oh, you know what, Port Adelaide's still there, I'm going to keep my eye on them. Because if they're beating Collingwood by 70, 80 points, then, you know, they're in good stead. And unfortunately, just haven't been able to get the job done against the, the better sides. And at this stage, when you're 1-3, and three, sitting against top 8 teams, you're not going to be wanting to, you know, you, you, well, you want to play the best teams every week. And obviously, you're not going to be able to do that and prove a point every single time. you got to keep grinding away. You know, it's only round nine. Uh, if you're coming into round 10, you're sitting six and three. You know, at, at, at the end of this one, you'd be seven and three. You get a bit of percentage back, hopefully, and then you were able to move into round 11. Then you go into your buy and you come out in the second half of the year and you play some pretty damn good footy. That should be the plan for Port Adelaide. Focus on the areas you need to improve in. You've got the whole season to grind it out. You know, Richmond didn't come out. We know their story. They don't come out fast every single yeah, they build their way into the season, and as soon as they get to finals, they're absolutely dominating right there. You know, I think the, the Dogs and Ds, you know, they've had a fast start. They're the best sides in the comp at the moment, but you don't know what's in store for them to come to the later part of the year. You don't win premierships in May and June and July. You win them in September. And I think the same would be said about the West Coast Eagles. The same would be said about Brisbane. You know, they started not so great, but now they're both, both teams are building. 
You know, you look at someone like the GWS Giants, you know, they haven't had a great start to the year, but they're building now. So all these teams who had a quick start out the gate, you know, this is a long race. And you've got to build into your season. And this is an opportunity for Port Adelaide now to come out against Collingwood, a lower-ranked side, put them to the sword, play four quarters of footy, and, you know, just give yourself a bit of confidence in your ability that this is what's working. Yeah, you can improve on what you, what's not working, but you can keep ticking the boxes. And as long as you keep doing that... You now, I expect us to go into the bye now 8-3. and three. We should beat the Pies and we should beat Fremantle at home. You go into the... You buy eight and three, you're almost guaranteed a final spot. You know, then you come out on the other side, you've got a Geelong outfit, you've got Hawthorne, there's a Sydney there. You know, your, your second half of the year is actually pretty good. And, and you know, we're playing these good teams at home. So, yeah, we lost to the dogs at home, but you're going to build your season. And by the time you get to that last month, you want to be playing your best football. So then you go into the bye before finals and you come out ready for that first qualifying final or that first elimination final. And you're ready. You're at your peak. So that's the whole mindset, I think, Port Adelaide. I hope that's actually what they're taking. And yeah, you know, we can get mad. We can see what needs to be improved and hasn't been improved for four or five years. You know, forward entries and, um, you know, you look at you know the contested footies a bit off and our starts are very slow on some occasions. And, you know, these have been the, the little keynotes that we've been focusing on as fans and as people watching. That's what's been the issues. And, you know, you've got this week, you come into this week. We know this time, uh, the last time we played Collingwood was at the Gabba, so a whole different dynamic. We won by five goals, and we were able to um, you know, control that game throughout. You know, Collingwood, every time they got a bit of momentum, we were able to control momentum, which has been lacking this year, I think, for us. We haven't been able to control momentum as much as we did last year. I think that's due to the fact of... The, uh, the the change in rules and you know, it's a little bit harder to control momentum. So when a team does get four, five, six goals in a row, you're not able to control that as well. And you have to go back to the real basics of one-on-one footy, defensive efforts, contested footy. You, you know, you're going to be changing in quick moments now. And I think well, we haven't adapted to that as yet. And I did, I actually did like what Kenny said on AFL 360 during the week, which he said, give us 14 weeks, which means week one of finals. You know, we want to get to that position. So if we're sitting, you know, a top two would be great because then you get a home final and that's what we should what we should be aiming for. But if we do get to third or fourth, we get a double chance, you know, we might be playing a D's or a Dogs at, um, at the MCG. And you know what? You come out and you say, hell yeah, here we are. You know, th- we're the 14 weeks now. This is our peak. We're at our peak performance. We've got a month of football to come out and produce something special. So I did like that, but I didn't like um, the way we're talking about, we're dismissing certain things. Like, well, I know internally it's probably discussed a lot more and it's probably a lot more heated, but the forward entries, getting Charlie Dixon involved, that's the one key focus I'm focusing on this week is Charlie Dixon. He took him to the last quarter to get a mark last week. He kicked two goals in the quarter and he was de- definitely influential in the contest. But the problem for me is that slow ball movement. We haven't been able to lock it inside 50 as well. And every time we do get the ball and we do lock it in, we're just bombing it in anyway. And that's why it's old habits just starting to sneak in. And I'm not too worried about Collingwood or their structure. They've got a few good players. Obviously, they've got Pendlebury, Degoe. You've got Darcy Moore, who's one of the best defenders in the comp. And I know, I'm pretty sure Jared Ruffhead, not Jared Ruffhead, sorry, um, the other, uh, Jordan Ruffhead, um, will take uh, Charlie Dixon. He did that last time, did a pretty good job. Dixon only kicked one. So I'm expecting something pretty similar from their structural lineup. And yeah, they've got a few players to worry about, but I'm worried about us this week. That's the, all I'm focusing on. We play well. We play four quarters of professional Port Adelaide football. Then I'm not worried about what Collingwood are going to be doing because I know that we'll be able to beat them because we are a better side. But you just never know. And I'm, that's what I'm focusing on Charlie Hickson because I'd love to come out this week, watch him play a game of football where he takes contested marks for fun. You know, four or five. He should be setting KPIs this week. Four or five contested marks. He kicks three, four goals. And, you know, his influence on the game is massive. That's another one I want to focus on as well as Todd Marshall. If he gets selected this week, I'm expecting the two, probably the two changes. You know, Cleary goes out and I think, you know, McKenzie comes in. And then Houston will come in um, probably for a Farrell or something like that. That'll probably be the, the standard changes. But if Marshall stays in, then... I firmly believe he needs to he needs to KPI this week where he's got to 
uh, reach that. And if he doesn't reach that, then next week he doesn't get selected. So I'm saying to him, all right, Toddy, you need three contested marks this week. You know, we haven't seen a lot of contested footy from him in terms of in the air. He's not taking those marks uh, properly at all. You know, he's dropping a lot, and he's been dropping simple marks as well. His lead-up work is sensational. I'm not going to take anything away from that because when he does lead up and he does get good delivery, his foot use and ball use is great. And we saw that when he hit Carl Amon on the chest and, you know, Charlie Dixon in the air last week. You know, he had his, had his moments, but I think... He's got to have a KPI three contested marks this week. You know, have a couple tackles in there. His his defensive work's got to be good, um, but he's also got to hit the hit the scoreboard. And if he has three or four goals next to his name, then I'm ticking him off. Then I'm had I'm satisfied. But until then, you know, we've got to be putting pressure on him because he can't get a free ride forever. I'm not saying he's getting a free ride at all, but I'm just saying when you get to this point and you're not performing at a level that we expect then it start to raise some questions. And that's what I'm hoping this week. And I'm hoping that for everyone else because we're going to come out. We've been a good responding team this year. Every time we've been, we've had a loss, we end up coming out and we end up winning the next week. We haven't had two losses in a row and I don't expect that to change this week. We come out this week. We perform at a level that we expect as fans, as a club. And we put Colin to the sword because they can get stuffed. You know, and I don't want to see any prison bar talk or any prison bar wearing or anything like that before or after the game. There's no points to be proven this week other than win the game, get the four points and get the hell out of there. So my tip for this week, Port Adelaide will win by 47 points. I think it'll be um, a pretty decent game of football, I reckon. At the G, we don't get many opportunities. So I'm hoping that we come out and perform at a level that we expect. So 47 points. Yeah, a little bit generous. Eight goal win. Um, we haven't smashed sides too many this year. I'd be very happy if we come out and win by 80, 90 points or something like that, just to really grind Collingwood's gears a little bit more. But 47 points, get in, get out, and let's uh, let's get the victory and move on to next week. So that's what I'm expecting from Port Adelaide. Well, Port fans, thank you so much for watching this uh, preview of Port Adelaide versus Collingwood for round 10. Fingers crossed. I'm almost certain that I could be streaming the game this week of, of me watching. I'll be at home, so... Uh, we'll have a stream going. You can all get in the chat. We can all watch together. Um, and we can see the boys um, hopefully get the job done. So I'll announce that soon enough. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way. My name is Anthony. And as always, come the pair.